Welcome to the first video on rebuilding of the 351 Cleveland. Now back in 2008, I think, I was trawling eBay and found a short engine virgin bore for 200 bucks, so I picked it up. Um, the photos were taken, the advertisement photographs were taken with a really bad mobile phone, so it looked like there was a hole in one of the bores, but it was just a spot of grease. And so I grabbed it, and a couple of years later picked up a set of reconditioned cylinder heads with hardened valve seats and 4V valves, all this sort of stuff, so I grabbed those. And then subsequent to that, picked up some rock covers and intake manifold, all that sort of stuff. So I had this complete engine sitting under the bench for a long time with no car to put it in. Now in 2013, I rebuilt, rebuilt sorry, this XW Falcon and used a Windsor instead. Um, this one here was going to go into an XD and I changed my mind and bought another one again. Um, so of course now it's going into this XC restoration uh, project which I'm doing at the moment. So. The last part I bought was the very first one I needed, which was the correct rear main oil seal. So I'm about to get out of all my work clover and stick my garage trackies on and reassemble it in about 10 minutes. Um, or in about 10 minutes time. It's going to take a while to do. So, first video is this one. And this goes into a little bit of the history. Um, the Americans, of course, built the thing, designed and built it. And decommissioned it, I think, in 1974. Um, which is when the Australians came along and took it and did other things to it and used it in their cars. Of course, we talk a little bit about that. Um, the second video, of course, is disassembly and looking at all the parts that we've got. The third one, of course, is cleaning up all the block, getting the block all prepared for reassembly and talking about the parts we've bought to put in the car or in the engine. And, of course, the fourth one, which I'm about to start filming in a minute, will be reassembling the short motor. And then, of course, we'll put it together and stick it on the engine stand and run it and put a gearbox on it and all that sort of stuff. So... Hope you enjoy it. Um, it's sort of, but these have been released. This footage that's in this video was shot, you know, I think a year ago now. So, a while ago. So, hope you enjoy it. And this is the engine we're going to use in this car. This is a 351 Cleveland. It's pretty well date correct for the car. This is a, I think, March 77 engine. Uh, the car September 77. Uh, this is out of a P6 LTD, which is sort of the Rolls Royce front one. Um, now these engines, typically in XCs and, and all this sort of stuff, aren't all that powerful. They're actually disadvantaged. They're a very good design, they're American, and uh, this is an Australian built one of course, but the design is American. They started them in 1969, I think, and went through to 1974. But the problem they had was they were very, very difficult to emissionize, and of course in California in the early 70s and up to today, emission control has been very, very strict there. And the Americans had awful trouble doing that. And the reason for that is because of the canted intake and exhaust valves. On the intake side, they've got a valve relief cut on the top of the piston right up near the edge, which means that the ring set has to be mounted lower. And in doing that, um, there's that gap down the side of the piston between the piston wall and the top of the ring, which is very, very hard to burn that fuel. And of course, it gets thrown out and that's bad for the environment. Now, to counter that, they would have had to have redesigned the cylinder heads straighten out the intake valve, raise the ring height and all that sort of business, then you just end up with a nice big heavy Windsor. And so of course they ditched these in 1974 and, uh, and continued with the small block Windsor. Now in Australia things were a little bit different. We didn't do that, but what the Australians did was they retarded the valve timing three degrees and in doing that uh, it sort of slugged them up a little bit. Um, retarding valve timing can be very useful on a nice modified engine. It moves your power curve high, but of course with a camshaft like these it's, it's not beneficial. And I'm not sure if the retardation was grounded to the cam or it was in the timing set. But whatever the case, the camshaft and timing set are going straight in the bin. I'll use a nice Lenati. I've got a bit of experience with Lenati. I've got one in the XW here. Brother's got one in his Windsor, 347. It's got a few other bits and pieces on it. And it threw out 443 horsepower. Not even sorted out yet. So we're going to use the Lenati cam, a Rollmaster 9 keyway uh, timing set, which can be dialed in. And that's the secret of these things, really dialing a cam in properly. Now there were three types of emissionizing we used. We used um, positive crankcase ventilation, which is basically taking, um, taking fresh air from the air cleaner going into the intake, or into the top of the rock cover I should say, uh, mixing with all the blow-by gases and so forth, and purged out via a one-way valve into the engine and reburnt. Uh, that came about in the late 60s. Uh, then they used evaporative emission, which you'll see on the car is basically a sealed fuel cap where um, and a sealed carburetor float bowl and that's all stuck into a can of uh, activated charcoal when the engine starts up of course that purges out with vacuum um, and of course in 1976 July I believe it was we started with exhaust gas recirculation and what that basically is is the heads are changed a little bit and the exhaust is ported up through here comes through a hole here and here in through an EGR valve and is reburnt into the engine now the problem with that 
Um, all these bits and pieces with the valve timing, the EGR, that sort of thing, is it makes the engine less efficient. Of course, fuel economy went down, I think, between 10 and 15%, um, and also power output was down. So in the XC range, they introduced the Carter Thermo Quad, a nice big four barrel, to try and counteract that. Now that was all good, but on the 302s, it was a little bit too big a carburetor. Um, I think they flow somewhere between 750 and 850 CFM, they're quite big. And of course you had that bog down effect. And in the later Cleveland 302s, there was a restrictor in the secondary here, just to speed up the airspeed, or just to increase the airspeed, I should say. I'm coming! And so, that was a bit of a problem with the 302 engines, that didn't have the capacity to use it. <clears throat> Every time I start a camera, daughter calls me, other daughter calls me, son calls me, dog starts barking, whatever, it's all good. In this case, I put a uh, cup of tea on the brew and forgot about it, which is always happening here. Tea's always going cold. Now, with this engine, as we said, we're going to use Linati, we're going to use a nice timing set. That's all good. New oil pump. We don't need a high volume oil pump because we're not turbocharged. We don't need another oil feed anywhere, so it's just a standard volume sign for that sort of thing. New bearings, all this sort of stuff. I'll leave the pistons away now. I'll check them out again. But in order to put the new cam in, we'll also get the distributor recurved. I'll put a Pertronics igniter in if I can find one for this dizzy. Um, this is a points one, this isn't out of this engine. Good thing to remember with Clevo's dizzies is to put in, they've got two different sized spigots at the bottom for the oil drive. Um, and so we may have to make sure we either get the early one or the late one because there's a bit of size difference there. So we'll get the recurved. Also, it's going to have a Carter Thermo quad, which they're ugly, but they can fly right, you can modify those. And a functional EGR valve. Sort of. It'll, it'll be there anyway and it'll look pretty good. And that'll all be connected through these TVS switches. So it has to look absolutely factory. That's what I'm interested in. So, I hope you enjoyed the series. It's probably not going to attract the, the uh, attention that the XW did. But um, I'm kind of looking forward to it because they kind of mean a bit to me, these XCs. I'm quite fond of them. Now this engine's a bit, uh, I bought it as a block. These heads, believe it or not, they're all dirty. They've got bog dust and overspray and everything on them. These have already been reconditioned. These are um, TV Clevo with uh, unleaded or hardened valve seats in them, 4V exhaust valves, that sort of thing, and they're all good to go. So when I take these off, they'll look brand new. That manifold looks like it's off an XD. They're not got, there's no restrictors in there. It could be an XD, an early XD, whatever. I think my XD's got one the same as that. Right, so I do apologise. That's all I have for you in this first chapter of the 351 rebuild, but I've got something extra I want to show you. It's uh, a rebuild I did on a 429 uh, Ford 385 big block I built uh, for my XD Falcon back in 2007 and it was for the XD because we towed a horse float that sort of thing but also wanted a bit of a hot rod as well never ended up using it though I spent a lot of money on it and then I had it all ready to go in and then at the end of the day Susie and the kids sort of quit the horses a little while after that and I thought you know what I haven't got the heart to pull this little 302 out and put it in which is a bit mad I suppose in some ways but we had the car from new and I didn't want to hot it up so I had a change of heart, should have kept the motor but I didn't. It was a dove block which is very unusual, it had the thick uh, webbing for around the, around the um, main bearing so it could have been drilled for 4 bolt main. Um, very very rare engine of course I managed to get cobra jet um, rock covers for it and all these other goodies that went into it. It was a, a stonking engine but of course I never even started it and I sold it uh, as fresher rebuilt never started yet or not started yet. So I want to show you that, uh, hopefully you enjoy it, I'm sorry I haven't gotten much content for this first one, but uh, hopefully you enjoy it. And here we are washing out the bores, it's back from its fresh load of uh, machine work at Crankshaft Rebuilders in Blackburn, they did absolutely incredible work, um, the Crankshaft of course is sitting in there. Um, this was a great engine, you can see those wider webs, we've just lost it there, but anyway we're dialing the camshaft in. Um, and what's coming up next there it is again it's a homemade degree wheel but I used it for years before I replaced it I think I still got it in my toolbox somewhere just the magnitude of these things is huge it's the same block as a 460 um, but much bigger bore I think it was bored I can't remember 30 or 40 thousand that's my CCing apparatus which is homemade um, I still use it though it works and of course my son uh, coming out to sort of see what dad's up to and my, my kids used to do that. My daughter's here. She bought a table and her craft equipment. Um, they weren't into the cars. They've never been into the cars. And you can see here, she's bored out of her brain. Now, she's 20 now. This is a little while ago. Um, but you know what? They still come out to chat every now and then. 
of course. There we are. I've always put stainless bolts in with anti seize um, just because I think they look nice. It had that sort of Merlin look about it, if you know what I mean, with the exposed fasteners, which I reckon always look really, really, really good. Um, there's the cylinder heads, of course. They underwent a lot of porting and uh, or match porting as well, that sort of thing. Um, cost a fortune to, to get done. There's another view of it there. Just showing the sheer size of it. They're a huge engine physically, those things. And of course, you can see the intake ports there looking rather enormous as well. Um, really regret selling it. Really, really, I regret selling everything though. Jane Leno, I think, once said never sell anything because you always regret it, and I feel like that too. And of course, there she is again. Didn't have roller rockers, but it still would have turned out some healthy, healthy numbers. And of course, it's complete here in this shot. Uh, with the XD silver sort of rocket cover or what do you call it? Air cleaner assembly with 429 Thunderjet sticker on the top. So it ended up being a garage ornament for a little bit, but at the end of the day, I never used it, moved it on, and then promptly regretted it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. There it is, there with a, a little 351 that, that just was an ornament. There was nothing particularly good about that, but at the end of the day, drive safely, enjoy your classic, and I'll see you later. Ta-da.